Hi, I'm Mike Wolf. I'm a research fellow at the Berkeley Center for Law and Technology. I'm here today with Professor Lydia Lauren uh, to discuss some of what the interesting work she's been doing in both authorship and in publishing. Uh, hi, Lydia. <laughs> Great, thanks, Mike. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Lydia Lauren. I'm on the faculty at Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland, Oregon. But I also founded a company called Semaphore Press, uh, which publishes digital law school casebooks. So you founded Semaphore Press, and you also worked on a casebook that you published through them. Correct. Right? right. So I have a casebook that I published with a traditional uh, publisher, and so I'm familiar with that model. I know how it works. It results in casebook prices that are um, right now over $200 per copy for my students. And um, my co-author and, uh, and I on a different book, um, we realized that our students were doing things like not buying the book, uh, using the book that was on reserve, um, not doing the reading, sharing books, so one, one copy would be bought by three students. Um, and so by and large, they weren't actually doing all of the assigned reading. And so we thought, we need a different model that will allow the students to actually get copies of the books. Now, for the uninitiated, can you explain a case, what a casebook is? Sure. Briefly? Right. So a casebook is the word that we use to describe a textbook for law mm -hmm. school classes. So it's a, it's a textbook, but it's designed mm -hmm. for law school. So you write both an intellectual property casebook that you publish through Semaphore uh, using a very different model than the traditional model. Correct. And a copyright casebook published through, a I believe, Aspen? That's right. Aspen is our so, publisher for, for the copyright casebook. So in a sense, you're competing with yourself. Is that? Um, <laughs> well, in a sense, but not really. Yeah. So um, we'd be happy at Semaphore Press to publish a copyright mm -hmm. casebook. We don't have one right now. Um, but the copyright casebook is for copyright classes. The intellectual property survey book is really for students studying intellectual property um, writ large, which is more than just copyright. So when you, when you sell a casebook through Semaphore, mm -hmm. well, what does that process look like, and, and why is it so different? So it's different because we put the casebook up on the web. Uh, it's a PDF with no digital rights management on it. And the student, when they encounter the casebook, um, faces a choice. So there's a suggested price of $30. And for that $30, they'll get access to the casebook. They can download it. But they can actually change that price. They can choose to pay less. Um, they can choose to pay more. Sometimes we do have people who pay us more, which is wonderful. Um, but there's also, at the bottom of the screen, a free rider button. Mm -hmm. So they can click on the button that says, free ride. I don't want to pay, but I want to download the book anyway. And for us as educators, what's critically important to us is that the student have access mm -hmm. to the materials that are assigned for the class. So if for whatever reason they feel they can't pay, we still want them to have access to the assigned reading materials. And we think $30, that's a fair price, especially in a market where typically they're looking at paying north of $200. And by and large, we find students pay. Um, we've, we've tracked the data. Uh, we uh, actually have published an article that has all of the data in it. And what we see is uh, payment rates above 80%. So 80, 80 2% of the students enrolled in courses that assign a Semaphore Press book pay something for wow. the book. And you've been running for, I want to say, five yeah. years now? Yeah, we've been around for five, five years. years. We, you know, that's not our primary job. Our primary yeah. job is mm -hmm. professors. Uh, but we've been adding about one casebook a year, so, which is great. Well, that's fantastic. As an author of casebooks, do you feel differently toward, uh, toward the two different models? Do you, uh, with regard to either mission or as an ed in your mission as an educator? So I, you know, there's a part of me that understands why the books cost $200. Mm -hmm. They cost $200 because the publisher does a lot of marketing. Mm -hmm. They send people to sit in my office and ask me about the classes I teach. And then they send me free copies of the book. Right? And if I adopt a book, that's great, because I'm not the one that's going to pay the price. My students are going to pay the price. I understand that market. I understand why it works. It employs a lot of people. I get that. Um, but there are these consequences. And the big consequence that I was most disturbed by was my students not actually having their own copy of the assigned mm -hmm. reading. And that's a problem for me. So, Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, sit down with us today. I think, actually, if we could end on uh, uh, with you telling us what your advice would be for anybody who's interested in similarly taking a new approach to academic publishing and particularly with educational materials. 
Uh, is this an area where there's more opportunity? I think this is an area where you know we should be experimenting with different business models mm -hmm. to see what works. The open courseware initiative I think is very interesting. I think it's important for authors to have some remuneration. Mm -hmm. The open courseware, some of those authors get um, grant funding to do mm -hmm. the initial publication and that's fantastic. In the law school market, it's important that the books be kept up to date. Mm -hmm. So an initial grant isn't just isn't enough. Mm -hmm. You need to also have an incentive to keep those books up to date. So some payment, I think, is appropriate. So I think you know, experiment with different models. Go for it. So with Semaphore, you're charging or asking uh, a suggested price of thirty dollars per case book sold. What do you do with the royalties? So we enter into an agreement with the authors that's pretty different from the traditional publishing market. Um, we offer a 50-50 split. So whatever we collect, half of that's going to go to the author. And also, we don't enter into an assignment of the copyright. We ask for a five-year license. And at the end of those five years, we revisit. Are you happy? Do you like the model? Do you want to keep publishing under this model? And if you're not, OK, great. You know, wait, we had a nice five years. <laughs> and that, that's pretty different than the traditional publishing uh, world. Can you tell us a little bit how the experience works in traditional publishing? So in traditional publishing, you know, in the casebook market at least, the range of royalty is usually somewhere between 10, maybe 12. Sometimes I've heard 15%. Um, and that's of the case books sold. So it doesn't mm. count the free copies that are sent to uh, potential adopters, to the professors. And the author's copyright in those? What's standard practice there? Standard practice there is a full assignment. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> pretty different. Pretty different, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure.